Hi, I'm Danny, and this is one of my slapdash dioramas. In this video, I'm going to be making a diorama of the Lone Gunman's V-Dub Combi Van. So this was a spin-off series from the X-Files. There was one season in 2001, and the whole thing's on YouTube if you search for it. So if you like the X-Files, I recommend you check it out. And of course, it's about the three nerdy sort of hacker guys who had the Lone Gunman newspaper where they'd write about conspiracies and that sort of thing. So the panel van on the show is actually a 1975. I couldn't find one of those. So I'm using a green light 1971. I'll just have to make a couple of little alterations to it. I think Majorette might also do a V-Dub panel van as well. Taking a look at the little green light off of the turntable, we can see it's not put together quite the same as your average Hot Wheels or Matchbox. Doesn't have any rivets at the bottom. It's got these posts coming in off of the bumpers to hold the base on. So I'm going to start by prying them out. So you'll notice one side came out quite easily, but the other side just wouldn't budge. It's like welded in there and it actually ended up breaking off. And the front bumper came out quite easily, both sides. With the bumpers removed, I could use my craft knife here to pry the base off. It was in there quite tight. Once I had the front end out, a little bit of force and I could remove the whole base and the interior. The next step was to remove all of these little plastic parts from the body casting. I'll start by prying off the roof rack. And the ends of the plastic headlights and tail lights had been welded over a little bit, so I'll just scrape those off. Then I could use my pick to push them out. And there were some short posts holding in the windscreens, so I've carefully drilled those out. And then I'll be able to pop the windows out. Right, so there's the little plastic parts. I'll just put those away for later. Now I can use some paint stripper to remove the paint off of the casting. And 
There it goes. I've given it a clean up with the wire brush on my Dremel as well. Now I'm going to fill up these holes on the roof. So I start off with some masking tape underneath them. I cut some short plugs out of some styrene rod. And I can place one of these in each of the holes. Next, I'm going to use some extra thick super glue to fill them in. Here they are, about five minutes later, they've gone nice and hard. I'm just going to sand it off smooth. So because this isn't exactly the right model of van, you'll notice that the indicator lights there are down the bottom on this one, whereas on the Lone Gunman's one, they're up the top. So I'm going to use a sanding drum on my rotary tool and then a file and some sandpaper to remove these original indicators. Once the original indicators were gone, I've glued on some new styrene ones there. See they're a bit square, so I'll use some sandpaper to round them off. The lone gunman's combi's got a spare wheel on the front, so I'm just using a little Hot Wheels one, and I've cut it in half. I'm just going to drill a wee hole in the front of the van there and I can glue a short little axle on there later on to hold the wheel on. There was also an air vent on top of their combi so I've added that. And I've also added a couple of little indicators because there were only indicators on one side of this combi originally for some reason. Here I've glued in the little short axle to hold the front wheel on and before I paint the van I'm just going to put some mask over the axle there so that it doesn't get all clogged up with paint. So now it's just about ready for some paint but there's no way to hold on to it really so I've just glued a little slab of styrene and under the roof there and I can use that to grab on with my forceps and I'll be able to hold it while I paint it and I can just snap that off later on. I start out painting with some grey primer and then I painted the whole thing white Next I masked off the top of it with some masking tape and I painted the lower half in dark green and I want it to look a bit faded so I then gave it a light coat of very thinned down white so now I've got a faded looking green. 
Next I detailed the door handles and the light fittings and the indicators etc. I apply a dark grey wash over the van pretty much trying to just focus on the panel lines And then once they had dried, I'm going to use a little sponge tool I've made here out of a cotton bud and some dishwashing sponge. And I'm just going to gently dab on some rust. So with the rust and the weathering done, I use a little bit of PVA glue to glue the spare wheel to the front. And then once that had dried, I pressed in the headlights and the tail lights and the windscreens. This was all sealed with a very light coat of matte varnish and I can move on to the base and the interior. So the front of the interior is like plastic welded together. So I've cut through one side there and opened it up so I could get the paint in a bit easier. And I just painted it black and did a little bit of detailing on the dash and the steering wheel there. The base, I first remove the tyres. And then I could probably grip the rims there and pull them off the axles. Then I painted them with some black primer and then dull aluminium and a black wash. I also dabbed them over with the rust sponge as well. So there they are back in the chassis. I think they're looking nice and aged. Both of the bumpers were painted black and then I hit them with the watered down white paint to make them look faded. And again, dab on a very small amount of rust. And that's all our fan parts done. I can put them away until later when I reassemble it. Now we'll move on to the base. So I'm going to be using this photo frame. It costs about $4. Using a craft knife, I've cut out a piece of foam here to fit into my frame. Next I chip away around the edges of the foam. This is going to make it look like a broken concrete. Yeah. 
There we go. I've chipped all the way around the outside of the block. Now I've got another piece of foam I'm going to use to make a brick wall. I'm going to put my own brick texture in it. So I'm just using a ruler here. And I'll start with some horizontal lines. There we go, there's all the horizontal lines. I'm just gonna use this tool here to cut in the vertical lines. And after a little while, I've got myself a nice rough looking brick wall. I've got some balsa wood here. I'm going to use this to cut out a couple of sliding doors. Again, I'm going to use my ruler here and a tool to score some lines into the doors basically carving in some planks Then once I'd carved my planks in, using a wire brush, I'm rubbing it over them just to add some more texture. And here are my doors once I've glued on some extra pieces, handles there, and some metal straps. And on the wall here I've added a power cable and a fuse box and the runner for the doors. start colouring the doors, I begin with some watered down grey paint. Once this had dried, I'm going to use some salt to add some chipped paint. So I've got some rock salt there I've ground up. I'll just apply some water onto the doors. Then I can sprinkle on some of the salt. I painted the doors red. Once they had dried, I can brush off the salt there. I'll get some nice chipped paint effect. Once 
once I'd cleaned those off thoroughly, I'm going to add a dark grey wash. So I just wet down the doors first, then apply the wash. And once this had thoroughly dried, I painted all the metal parts in steel and then rust. And I'm just adding a few more rust effects here and there. And then some black weathering powder focusing around the base of the doors so that they're a bit darker at the bottom. Back to the base slab. I start out by painting that grey, I then applied light speckly coats of black and then a lighter grey. Next a black wash. dry brush around the outsides with some white so will really highlight the cracked edges Then I use a sponge to add some black and rust colored inks around under where the brick wall is going to go just to add a little bit more shading and perhaps staining where stuff's run down off of the wall. I undercoat the brick wall with a German red brown. I use a sponge to apply some sepia ink. Then I mixed a little bit of black ink with that and applied some of that. So I'm going for that grimy old alleyway brick wall look rather than the red and white mortar look. So here it is after a couple more applications of darker and darker inks. Now I'm going to apply a black wash, so wet the whole thing down first just to make sure the wash goes into all of the low points. Print out some signs here on some A4 paper and I cut them out and then we use some 80 grit sandpaper to sand down the back of them until they're looking transparently thin. They'll also end up pretty scruffy looking as well.
And then I use some watered down PVA glue to apply the sanded down signs onto the brick wall. Once these were dried, I'm using some pigment powders to weather them a bit. The doors are glued in the place and I've made some little styrene rollers for them. I use some PVA glue to glue the wall onto the base. Here I've printed out some trash on some more A4 paper. Now I've cut it out, folded up the pizza carton there and glued them on using some PVA glue. And again a little bit more PVA glue. I'm going to use this to stick on some sand. And that's our diorama base pretty much completed. I can press that into the frame. And it's ready to display the car. Right, so just before we take a look at our finished Lone Gunman's V-Dub Combi Panel Van, let's just take a quick moment to look back and be reminded of what we started with. Our little blue green light panel van, 1971. It's got that cool roof rack and stuff. All around it's a pretty cool little model, but we're going to make it a little bit more unique. And here it is after a repaint, a restyle, and a few years, perhaps hunting conspiracies, not getting looked after very well. So I hope you like how that came out. You can compare it to the one on the show and see how similar you think it is. So now we just need to place it on the diorama, but just before I do that, I'll throw a big thanks out to my awesome Patreon supporters. And just to let them know that I am looking into my 3D printer at the moment. I just want to make the right choice and it's also a bit expensive. If you'd like to help out as well, check out the link in the description down below. Thanks heaps for watching this video, I really hope you enjoyed it. If you'd like to see similar stuff, remember to subscribe and check out my channel.